Namaste and welcome to the very first episode of Idea Dialogue. Idea Dialogue is a weekly television talk show. It's an initiative led by Asian Institute of Diplomacy and International Affairs, a foreign policy think tank based in Kathmandu. With the theme of shaping the making of foreign policy, rather than just randomly picking up the subject from day-to-day -day headlines, this show intends to cover incisive analysis on various facets of Nepal's global affairs. Most significantly, Idea Dialogue aims to support in right-tracking the discourse and direction of Nepal's foreign policy. We will be talking to politicians, bureaucrats, diplomats, international relations scholars, business communities and prominent figures on issue-focused discussion. In this first episode of Idea Dialogue, I will be talking to Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Pradeep Gewali, mainly focusing on foreign policy achievements, issues related to bilateral ties and the priorities of his government. Honorable Minister, welcome to IDEA Dialogue. Thank you. It's an honor. We are extremely pleased to welcome you as our first guest. Uh, thank you. And let me extend my sincere thanks and congratulations yeah. for starting a new episode, new event of this track show. We are honored. Uh, it has been more than a year that you have been leading the foreign ministry. Can you just highlight some of the major outcome in the foreign policy? The most noteworthy achievements or development, you can say, of this year is the Nepal's profile is gradually evolving, increasing, and it is being more visible more audible and more constructive. Uh, our foreign policy is becoming more proactive rather than reactive. It is foreseeable and consistent. Uh, as you know, uh, it is a well-known statement that every foreign policy is the extended form of its national policy. Uh, when we are focusing in our domestic front to uh, achieve uh, rapid economic growth, uh, to fulfill the desire of uh, Nepali people to have a decent life, uh, so that's why the government has set the motto of uh, prosperous Nepal and happy Nepali. Uh, our foreign policy has been refined uh, fine tuned so that we can uh, comply mm -hmm. with our domestic priorities. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, that my assumption in uh, this ministry, we have constructively engaged with our neighbors, we are with our development partners, with our uh, leverage destinations, mm -hmm. and with the multilateral and regional forums. So, uh, in the nutshell, uh, I will. Uh, focus that now Nepal is being gradually in the center of the uh, attention of the uh, global community. Honorable Minister, you just uh, mentioned we are being heard and seen. We are grabbing the attention in the center spotlight of the global arena. It is because of our internal effort or our location as we are between two giant economies? Uh, both. They have uh, contributed uh, to uh, increase our uh, profile and uh, attention. Uh, of course, the geopolitics matters. Uh, Nepal is fortunate that we, are, we have been located in two big uh, glo global, two largest uh, markets and two most uh, promising economy uh, of this uh, 21st century. Uh, after the uh, holding of the three tires election in 2017, now we have a very strong and uh, almost two-third majority government. Mm -hmm. So, based upon this political stability and the political achievements we have uh, uh, strengthened, uh, now uh, global attention has been focused because uh, Nepal can offer a lot in the investment, in the uh, trade, in the tourism, and even in the uh, um, issues of the uh, global concerns like climate change, like, like peace building, like uh, gender 
equality and many more. Honorable Minister, I'll come to economic diplomacy and other aspects on the later part of the show. Um, here, I would like to know, today's Nepal is a different Nepal. As a foreign minister, do you have a specific dream or vision uh, to lead Nepal's foreign policy? How do you want to shape Nepal's foreign policy in the days to come? Because it's been said that, you know, we don't have proper concrete foreign policy. Our policies are always driven by people's will and interest. Do you have any plans to shape Nepal's foreign policy? Actually, the foreign policy has two components. Mm -hmm. One is permanent, mm -hmm. more stable, and more consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, and second is uh, the new uh, content, new elements, mm -hmm which are uh, to uh, comply with the change uh, national and global context. Uh, Nepal has always pursuing uh, the foreign policy uh, based upon uh, sovereignty, uh, national integrity, national dignity, uh, non-aligned, uh, uh, based upon the uh, principle of the Panchasila and uh, peaceful settlement of the disputes. Don't you feel in the past it was quite shaky? Uh, to some extent. But uh, what I, we can uh, be proud that basically Nepal uh, pursued a, a, a consistent and uh, balanced foreign policy. That's why uh, even in the uh, adverse uh, situation, uh, Nepal was able to uh, maintain its sovereignty and integrity. That, that is the big, uh, big achievement. You just mentioned the dynamics are changing, the power is shifting. You know, there's a new whole, new era occurring. It seems like that. Uh, is it a challenge to maintain a uh, balance? Uh, yes, of course. Sometimes we uh, feel uh, that type of stress mm -hmm. uh, because uh, having located in an ex excellent geolocation and having, having its own uh, strategic advantage. Nepal is always being a center of uh, the attention, uh, either uh, for positive intention or other vested interests. So uh, sometimes uh, the big powers, they uh, want uh, to uh, have the Nepal's policy uh, in compliance with their uh, strategy uh, interest, but uh, we have a established and very uh, consistent uh, policy guideline. Mm -hmm. uh, when we uh, engage with our uh, partners, or our friends, uh, major uh, policy guideline for our engagements is enmity with all and enmity with none. Mm -hmm. There are no any enemy uh, hostile forces towards Nepal. Mm -hmm. We want to be linked. Mm -hmm. So we have no that type of any big global or uh, regional uh, ambitions. Mm -hmm. Just our ambition is how we can uplift our 18% uh, poor mm -hmm. uh, within a very short, of, uh, short span of time. But having said this, Honorable Minister, we have to lead our own way we have to mass forward in the path of rapid economic growth. But how difficult it is to build our own way. Like you just said, it's, uh, we have our own agenda, we have our own national policy uh, that just ensures a national growth. Are we ready to cope up the pressure? Uh, we should, and we are trying our best. Because uh, in this globalized world, no single country can uh, move uh, alone. Mm -hmm. uh, it should uh, make the adjustments, it, sh it should make the linkages, it should make the uh, cooperation mm -hmm. and collaboration. Uh, what is the biggest challenge today is uh, we have the uh, shortage of resources or resources gap, resource gap, because to uh, Mm, be uh, graduated from the least developed status by 2022, uh, we need uh, at least 
17 billion, 16 to 17 billion dollar uh, uh, capital investment uh, per year. So far, government is just spending around five billion dollar, and private sector maybe six, seven, uh, eight billion dollar. We uh, lack um, around five, six billion dollar every year. That's why the growth, though there is a big potential, but it is uh, in six, seven uh, percent uh, in average. So uh, we have to uh, welcome the foreign direct investment, we have to welcome uh, um, uh, official um, development assistant we, and we have to uh, develop joint ventures mm -hmm. with our development partners and investors. Uh, so uh, we should, uh, though always we should be guided by our national priorities. National interest must be kept in the center, but uh, the collaboration and cooperation is extremely important. Making adjustment and compromising on national issues, there's a very specific line I hope the nation is aware. We are trying to maintain a perfect balance between two giant neighbors. And Nepal, being a small economy, has always catered to economic powerhouse in neutral fashion in the past. Um, it hasn't taken a stance on issues or taken sides in the past. But these days, people argue that the neutrality approaches has been diminishing. Do you have any comment? Uh, neutrality is uh, a relative term. Uh, it is not uh, any absolute meaning. When there is uh, some type of military tensions, disputes, strategic clashes, between the friends. In that case, you should uh, keep uh, your neutral position and you should always pursue a policy of the peaceful resolution of the disputes. You cannot uh, take a side uh, between uh, the neighbors because uh, the, uh, we, uh, we need equally uh, the cooperation of both neighboring countries. We cannot uh, shut down uh, the door to one side and just open the door for the other side. We uh, should be associated in both sides. So that's why if you are talking about the neutrality in the uh, period of uh, hostility, then it is still relevant. Being more specific, this go government has been repeatedly accused of catering and pandering to emerging powerhouse like China. Do you have to say anything? Actually, uh, China has contributed significantly, uh, uplifting more than 800 million uh, people uh, above the poverty li uh, uh, lines uh, over the uh, 40 years. Mm -hmm. It is a type of miracle. Mm -hmm. The uplifting of uh, 800 million 80 crores uh, people is a big contribution not only for the Chinese people but to the global uh, humanity as well. So the development path, the development methodology, mm -hmm. innovation uh, they are using is, is exemplary mm -hmm. and we should uh, learn, um, keep aside what uh, political ideology the Chinese government is uh, pursuing. What is the biggest thing is they have proved that they have the ability for the well-being of the uh, people. So we want to be connected with uh, our both, both neighbors and uh, definitely um, with India we are uh, already linked in various means because our border is open, uh, topography is uh, more easier but uh, for the uh, Chinese side, uh, some geographical barriers are also there. But uh, due to, thanks to the um, scientific research and innovations, those barriers have been uh, now sidelined and we can uh, enhance more uh, frequent connections uh, with the Chinese market. Honorable Minister, you just m uh, mentioned Nepal is getting a center spotlight in global arena. But somewhere I feel whether it's about Nepal uh, facing um, economic blockade or the Nepali worker abroad involved in legal disputes regarding um, exploitation and discrimination, 
these incidents are hardly covered or this incident do not get any visibility your take on this with the collaboration and uh, coordination with uh, the ministry of labor uh, we are consistently um, engaging uh, engaged uh, to have a safer migration nepal is now leading the colombo process which uh, is a process of the uh, labor sending our labor resources countries and we uh, want to have a fair recruitment mm -hmm. uh, fair process decent work fair repri repatriation uh, uh, of their uh, remittance or their earning to uh, make all these things and to uh, safeguard the uh, rights of the our migrant workers uh, nepal is uh, working very closely with the uh, labor destination countries uh, due to the some um, lapses in our uh, government organs and that type of nexus of the uh, human traffickers uh, i may say uh there are still some uh, cases which uh, are very worrisome but we are trying our best to have a safer migration and to safeguard the right of the migrant workers so it's always said economic diplo diplomacy is the driving force of um, economic factor of any nation uh what's your take on this uh, are we doing enough to promote trade uh, tourism attract uh, to attract a big investor are we doing adequate efforts uh, basically we have five major components in uh, when we talk about the economic diplomacy how we can um, enhance the uh, official development assistance uh, at least for the time being because uh, odi is gradually shrinking Uh, the big nations they have not big uh, interest uh, to uh, the um, official uh, assistance but rather than they prefer uh, loans or uh, investments uh, however uh, uh, as the uh, least developed country and as the country which is uh, still struggling to uh, be rebuilt and reconstructed uh, after the uh, devastating earthquake we need some oda so one major part is uh, the oda second is um, the foreign direct investment mm -hmm. third is the tourism promotion and uh, next year we are going to uh, hold the uh, visit nepal year 2020 uh, aiming uh, to welcome uh, more than 2 million tourists uh, from the globe fourth is uh, technology transfer and uh, and boost the uh, trade and fifth is uh, a big nepali diaspora is in abroad around 5 million uh, nepali people work uh, in abroad and they have lot of resources lot of knowledge lot of uh, technical know how so uh, to um, make a wider collaboration meaningful collaboration with the nepali diaspora is also one of the part of our economic diplomacy are you happy with the government's initiation to push economic uh, diplomacy because i think in the past economic uh, diplomacy was never our agenda we were happy with the goodwill gestures only but now things have changed uh, not enough and we should have to uh, invest uh, to develop uh, policies to uh, groom to train and to uh, make sufficient uh, human resources mm -hmm. which can fulfill this new assignments and we should uh, have more frequent and uh, prompt communication as well uh, so there are a lot of things mm -hmm. to be done but we have a right uh, start a right beginning we have uh, make uh, major policy initiatives on this regard as you just mentioned our uh, diplomatic missions can be a part of uh, our dip diplomatic economy they can push our economy in the global arena are you happy the role our diplomatic mission are playing primarily uh, they are expected to protect the interest of home country in the respective host nation but there are number of question being raised from appointment of ambassadors to diplomatic misconduct and also the grievances uh, from nepali citizens residing abroad uh, like there are so many issues going around are you happy with the role uh, i am continuously following the uh, on the comments 
inputs you know, about the uh, our diplomatic engagements and the performance um, of our diplomats. Uh, cabinet has passed a new directives to uh, on the uh, appointment and the criteria of the uh, ambassadors, and we are. Uh, strictly um, implementing those criteria and we are going to um, hold a meeting of our honorary consuls which are working in um, more than 50 countries, uh, most probably in coming June. Uh, we will invite uh, them and we will discuss how they can serve best for the uh, interest of Nepal. Now I would like to draw your attention to EPZ. There's a huge uh, expectation from EPZ. EPZ had already completed the report with the recommendation for uh, necessary revision in our bilateral treaties. But when do you think the government will uh, formally receive the report? This process was uh, really a um, big initiative mm -hmm. to review, to redefine and redesign the uh, Nepal-India relations because uh, new uh, phenomenon, new components has been evolved over the years and we should have to adjust those dynamics. That's why and there were some, there were and are, still are some grievances from Nepali side about uh, the uh, 1950s treaties and many more. So, uh, the Right Honourable uh, Prime Minister K.P. Sarma Oli and His Excellency Narendra Modi ji, they initiated to form the, uh, this group, Eminent Persons Group, to review and recommend uh, the uh, required uh, new level of uh, relations between Nepal and India. I do believe that uh, the report has an excellent and more interestingly, the report has been finalized in a in an unanimous manner. Mm -hmm. There is no any reservation, there is no any note of dissent. Mm -hmm. That is a big thing, I think. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but uh, uh, the uh, no handing or uh, submission, no yeah, uh, has been a little bit uh, delayed. Mm -hmm. uh, the Indian side, they have uh, told us that uh, due to the uh, election, uh, the leaders are, are quite busy and uh, Immediately after the uh, general election of Lok Sabha, uh, they will uh, receive, not only they will receive, they will uh, implement the recommendations of the EPG. And I, I do believe that because this initiation was uh, taken by two leaders, uh, those both are in leadership, and it is a um, call of the time that we should uh, review and we should uh, develop uh, in a new uh, way of our relations. That's why I am quite optimistic that a report of the EPG will be submitted and it will be implemented. And the necessary recommendation will be taken care of because there's a huge expectation from the Nepali side. Of course, it should be and we will try our best to um, implement those recommendations. Now quickly, I would like to jump over to uh, Nepal. BRI, Nepal is a part of China-led Belt and Road Initiative project, but there are some concerns regarding the financing of the infrastructure project under this initiative. What is your reading and how government will deal with such concern to avoid any negative economic repercussion and to make it a win-win deal for all of us? A sense, a core message of uh, this initiative is the inclusive development. Mm -hmm. Uh, what is in uh, the center is that we are uh, the humankind with shared destiny. We cannot move alone. So that's why the co-journey uh, and the cooperation is extremely needed. So it is a um, new manifestation of the uh, uh, cooperation between the nations, between the communities, between the uh, institutions. Uh, so that's why uh, being uh, convinced and attracted by the uh, core message of this that uh, inclusive uh, development approach, Nepal has uh, decided to uh, be a part of BRI. Uh, second, uh, being a uh, landlocked country, Nepal critically needs the wider connectivity. So uh, our prime interest is uh, from BRI is the uh, cross-border connectivity. So far, the financing is uh, concerned. 
it, it will be uh, decided by uh, bilateral consultation. Mm -hmm. It is not imposed. Mm -hmm. it, uh, and Chinese leadership has always been um, extending its message that there will be you no know, any imposition. Uh, every nation has sovereign right to choose the, uh, its projects, uh, to decide the funding modality and operation modality. Recently, IMF said that the grant offered by China is a debt trap. <laughs> One should be very uh, aware and there are no transparency in such uh, debt. IMF said uh, that. Your remarks on that statement. Uh, in the decade of uh, 1990s, uh, uh, 2000s, mm -hmm. many countries in Latin America, they faced severe debt trap. Mm -hmm. But China was no lender at that time. Mm -hmm. Greece is st still uh, struggling to come out. There was no any Chinese investment. Mm -hmm. So it is based upon how you, you choose the projects, how you negotiate mm -hmm. with the uh, Investors. Of course that matters. Are we taking adequate measures yes, to avoid course. such debt traps, if they are traps? Uh, Nepal is capable uh, to judge and to identify what is uh, in the best interest of uh, its uh, nation. So uh, no need to unnecessary uh, skepticism or doubt or suspicions. Uh, government will decide in transparent manner. Uh, but I must say uh, the frequent acquisition uh, uh, that have of uh, rumors, please uh, prescribe uh, um, us those names uh, in, um, of individuals or uh, um, institutions which are philanthropic. Mm -hmm. We do not uh, have any uh, interest, uh, their own interest and they can easily lend the money to develop in Nepal. If there are so many uh, that uh, uh, kind philanthropers, then uh, Nepal will be definitely be uh, happy. But in this context, every nation should uh, take uh, necessary technical, financial and other assistance uh, from the developed countries. But our national interests should be in the, in the center. In the no, uh, no doubt on that regard. We've almost come to an end. I'd like to ask about the Sagarmatha Dialogue. Recently, government announced for hosting Sagarmatha Dialogue. Share more about this initiative, including agenda and theme of yeah. this dialogue. It is an uh, initiation uh, taken by Nepal government to share its own experiences in various fields, to draw the attention of the global community to the pertinent issues of the present day, and to take the lead in some areas. We have many things to share, to tell with uh, our friends. Uh, climate change, one of the most pertinent issue. Uh, our unique homegrown peace process and its experience can be shared. Our uh, inclusive democracy in which around 41% you, my uh, female representatives uh, are there. It is also promising. And in other areas also, we can share, we can uh, discuss, we can learn, and we can uh, even offer uh, some of our best practices. Lastly, I would like to ask, as our theme of the story, it's shaping the making of foreign policy. How do you analyze uh, the contribution of think tanks of Nepal, and do ministry have uh, any special plan to reform the government's supported think tanks? Uh, of course, they uh, are playing, and they can play a very uh, instrumental role uh, to policy inputs, policy recommendations, and uh, policy uh, feedbacks. Uh, that's why uh, we um, are trying to uh, strengthen our Institute of Foreign Affairs on the one hand and we are collaborating with various other um, uh, think tanks like Afghan, which is the Association of Former Am Career Ambassadors, uh, AFNA, which is the um, uh, Association of uh, Former uh, political appointee ambassadors and other institutions are also there and government has uh, a um, couple of months uh, ago um, uh, established a policy institute. Uh, we will collaborate with them and we uh, will be very happy to support them 
uh, and, and by, uh, should take the name of NCWA, mm -hmm. and Nepal Council for World Affairs, and other institutions like I, uh, IDEA and mm -hmm. other, they are also doing a uh, good job, mm -hmm. and um, our ministry will uh, collaborate with them in various fields. Honorable Minister, thank you for your time and inside remarks. Thank you. Thank you.